everybody got another job to do on the 2007 Honda Pilot today I'm gonna replace the front struts these right here first thing I want to do is I want to jack up the vehicle and get the wheel off now if you don't have an impact driver you're gonna to want to loosen your lug nuts uh, with the lug wrench before you raise the vehicle in the air before you start disassembling to remove the strut it's a good idea to uh, reach in here and grab this rod right here. This is your stabilizer link. You got one on each side. And uh, just give it a good wiggle. And if you feel any play, or especially if you hear any clicking noise or anything like that in there, then you're going to want to replace that link while you have this all apart. One end of the link is actually attached to the strut that you're removing. So if you are going to be removing and replacing the stabilizer link, you don't have to bother undoing this. You can just undo the bottom and uh, let the bad link go with the bad strut. Next thing I'm gonna do before I take anything off is I'm gonna hit the threads on all of the uh, fasteners that I'm gonna end up undoing with a little bit of uh, this rust, this uh, thread penetrant. So basically we've got up here with a stabilizer link attaches to the strut body we've got a bracket over here that supports this brake line and uh, we've got uh, the two large bolts that actually attach the bottom of the strut to the steering knuckle pop your hood if you haven't already done so next step I'm gonna pry up these three plastic little uh, access panels these little access panels these little plugs here they have a flat side on them so they're not perfectly round. And that flat edge is to give you just enough of a reveal to get a small thin blade screwdriver in there. And that's where you want to pop it up. You don't want to break the tabs on these because we're going to reuse these. So once you have these little holes open, you can use a uh, 15 millimeter socket with an extension to loosen the three nuts that are in there. Don't take them all the way off just yet, but just loosen them up. There is a large bolt in the middle. Do not, even if you could get to it with this on there don't try and take that off right now this is a small 12 millimeter bolt that holds this bracket on this 17 millimeter nut up here for the stabilizer link can be problematic uh, I use a breaker bar so I can break it free first Oh, on a longer extension. Yeah. yeah, I don't like the way that 12 point socket's fitting on there. I have a 6.17 millimeter. That's gonna be better. I'm just gonna switch the size of my drive. There we go. I don't want that nut to round over on me. There we go. So the problem with this is as soon as you get the uh, as soon as you get it broken free this center stud wants to actually rotate so the nut doesn't want to come off any further. So that's why there's actually a hex sized uh, hole in the center there. So you can't use a socket. You got to use a uh, 17 millimeter wrench and it's a pain in the butt so you can make your life a lot easier if you uh, take a couple minutes to clean up the rust on these threads now if you don't have one you can use an uh, allen wrench and then when the allen wrench is on there you can use a uh, open end 17 millimeter wrench to turn that nut but it's going to take you a month of Sundays to do that you do with what you can, right? So, since I've got it, I'm gonna use this. This is gonna turn this around for me so I can clean the threads on the other side. So since this is the old lefty-loosey, righty-tighty thread, okay, I would wanna turn the nut counterclockwise to take it off but since I have one of these for my ratchet, what I can do is actually 
rotate that center bolt. Yeah, maybe not. Uh, in case I neglected to mention it, this is a six millimeter, um, but sometimes it uh, doesn't fit very well because of the rust that's in there. So you might have to be a little persuasive with it. Because you want to make sure it's in there. So now with the wrench on there, if I turn, if I turn this stud clockwise, that nut will start to loosen. And it can be a bear. Go easy. What helps is every once in a while, if you reverse direction and back it out the other way a little bit. Might have to let the wrench do the work way all the way down the other end. Like that. There we go. Freeze up. I'm using my PB blaster. And if it significantly tightens up again like this, just reverse the procedure. Just repeat the procedure I just did. Reverse it, back it off a little bit. That'll give it a chance for those threads to clear all the crud that they just, oh, that you just got rid of. That'll get pretty wedged in there, so just kind of wiggle it and it comes out. Now time to work on the big boys. So the head on these bolts are 24 millimeter and the nuts are 22 millimeter, which is good because I don't have a lot of large metric wrenches and I have actually zero uh, metric sockets this large. Well, I shouldn't say that. I mean, my set goes up to 20 millimeter, but uh, I have up to 20 millimeter on my rack and then all of my extra large ones I have in a separate drawer because they're specialty and I know for a fact I don't think I have anything in that range. They go from like the 19s that I have on the rack here up to they jump up to like crazy like 30 something millimeter and larger for hubs and things like that that I bought over the years. The good news is these actually aren't that bad. Of course you know your experience may differ. This is New England where I'm doing this job. We have this wonderful concoction they put on our roads designed to absolutely murder our cars. In winter time. The stuff they put on the road in the winter time it's just uh, snow melting and ice melting and whatever and it just uh, it's just rusting the heck out of everything up here. Okay boys and girls now I'm going to do something that I don't recommend you do. Don't tell anybody I did this, okay? I'm going to find a standard socket that is close to the correct size. There we go. I'm only doing this because I already loosened that nut. Jesus. Of course, what is a top one have to be loose but the one that's harder to get to be the one that's crazy tight. There we go. I get a block of wood to put underneath here. All right now that I get a block of wood underneath here to support this I'm gonna pull out these large bolts. Another trick you could do is you could put a, uh, a nut, put it on a few threads to protect those threads at the end, and then whack it with a mallet. I know that's not a mallet. Okay, that's now free. Oh, damn, I forgot about this. I forgot about this line. This must be for the ABS. Oh yeah. Son of a gun. I forgot to spray that one with penetrant too. You know, this might be a good time to go break for lunch. Let that soak. 
the uh, stabilizer link, the lower end of the stabilizer link uh, is attached to, it's almost like a torsion bar that connects the two sides of the vehicle together. But that thing's got a, it's, it's kind of like spring loaded. So it's putting upward force on this bar right here. So that makes taking this out a little bit difficult. So I just stick something long in here to pry down and take some of the tension off of the bar and it pops right out. With this out of the way, it's easy to get to the 10 millimeter bolt that's behind here for the uh, for that last bracket I gotta get out. Oh, that's not a 10. What the hell is that? All right, so what I just did off camera was I removed those 13 millimeter nuts that I had loosened early on. So those are completely removed. They kind of fall off into that cowling area. I'm not gonna worry about them right now because we're gonna pop up that, uh, that shield on the top there when we go to reinstall it because it's the only way you're gonna get the nuts on easily. So push this off so it disengages from the, the knuckle shift it to the right and I'm being very careful of the cables the brake line and the ABS cable drop this whole thing down top out first and again making sure I don't snag and break off the cable now I get the whole strut assembly out now aside from having a vehicle fall on you and kill you we're about to, uh, we're getting ready to do the most dangerous part of this whole job. And that's gonna be, we're gonna compress this spring in order to take off this top bearing plate so we can put this coil spring on the new strut assembly. Before I do anything, I'm gonna make a note of the fact that when this bracket on the bottom is facing out towards the, uh, towards the wheel, that this top plate has one bolt that's facing more towards the front and two in the back. I just kind of want it, when I put this plate on the new one, I want to have it oriented pretty close to where it's supposed to be. It'll make installation easier. So to remove the strut assembly from the coil spring, you need a coil spring compressor. Now you can either get one of those kits that they a lot of auto parts stores, they'll rent them for free, which is basically, it's like two clamps that you hook on. Um, they're kind of scary. I've seen a lot of videos of people having those slip off and having the uh, spring violently uncompress. It can be very dangerous, especially if your hand's anywhere near a pinch point when that happens, or I mean, it could just be bad. So those things are really dangerous. Uh, this, is a commercial strut compressor compressor that is used in uh, service stations. Everybody, the memory card filled up. Um, so let me catch up on what happened because I'm probably going to end up editing out a lot of a lot of what happened because it, uh, well, quite frankly, was a disaster. So it turns out this part right here was seized and stuck on the shaft of the old strut. And I ended up putting a puller on to pull it off. So I need to reuse this dust shield or rubber boot thing and this piece right here. And this is also stuck on this shaft. All right, so the new struts are in. All that's left to do now is get a front end alignment done, which is recommended anytime you replace the struts. I uh, apologize for not having video of the reassembly. I uh, had the video card fill up on me and I was in a hurry, I needed to get this done. So reassembly is just the opposite of disassembly. So not to make it too oversimplistic, Here, but here's a few tips. So if you have a person that can help you on this job, that's great because the strut's kind of heavy. You gotta hold it up, get it through the holes, and then what I had to do is kind of hold it with one arm 
and at the same time reach underneath that plastic cover underneath here and get some of the nuts started. Once you get one or two nuts on there a little ways, then uh, you can let it go with a strut, obviously. That makes it a lot easier. But if you have somebody who can do that job for you, put the nuts on while you hold it up with both hands, it makes it a little bit easier. You don't want to drive these nuts all the way home, even loose. That'll allow you to shift that thing around if you need to a little bit. And it's going to make it a lot easier to get that bottom part of the strut onto the um, uh, onto the steering knuckle where those really big bolts go through. Big bolts, uh, the torque spec that I found online for those was 120 foot-pounds, but you might want to check that. And the torque spec for the lug nuts was uh, 100 pounds, and again, you might want to check that. That seemed a little light to me. Uh, the torque spec for these nuts on the top here are 30 pounds. So once you get that other um, once you get the bottom, the big bolts in and torque down, then you can torque down these nuts here. Then all that's left to do is the uh, stabilizing link and the uh, two little brackets for the uh, brake cable and for the ABS. The little cable, little bracket for the brake line, you want to leave that for last because if you have that off, you get a lot more clearance to get onto the nuts and bolts, those big nuts and bolts for the bottom of the strut there. If you put that on first, then that kind of gets in your way. Stabilizer link, that's pretty easy to get in. You can either put a bar or something to pry and push down on the uh, sway bar or whatever the heck that bar is that goes from side to side there that's, un that's, that's torsionally loaded to spring back up. Um, or you can pull up on the knuckle or a little of both actually. and that nut while you've got the stabilizing link out that's the perfect time to really give those threads a really good cleaning and that'll make your life a little easier when you're putting that nut back on other than that I um, guess that's pretty much a wrap so before I finish this video the immediately aftermath of yesterday's mishap still hurts by the way well you guys remember how I said the two biggest dangers about this job are the car falling on you and the uh, spring compression? Well, I was so worried about the spring compression, it didn't occur to me that since this job took a lot longer than I expected it to, that the jack may have settled or that the car may have rolled a little bit or moved. And like an idiot, I didn't chalk block the rear wheels. So, about 15 minutes ago, I was reaching up underneath there trying to get the top of the strut lined up into the holes and everything and the car rolled off of the jack, this crappy jack, rolled off of this jack and fell where you see it now and my hand, my left hand, was pinched between the strut right here, coil spring and here. It was stuck in there. My hand was already all the way in there. so. I got a really bad, nasty contusion forming right here across my wrist. So my hand's trapped in there and the car's just sitting there with all its glory. So I start screaming for my wife, thinking maybe she can reset the jack and take the weight off so I can get my hand out. She comes out, she's starting to, of course she's in a panic, so she's trying to work this jack and having trouble with it. So then I, uh, my son came out, my youngest came out, and I asked him, I said, why don't you see if you can grab on the front bumper and pull up a little bit, maybe just a little bit, because I felt like I could maybe just slip my hand out. And then uh, he tried, of course he couldn't do it, and then my 13-year-old uh, came out and he tried. And while, while the two of them pulled on the front bumper, I was able to pull up with my right hand on the, uh, wheel well there just enough to slip my hand out so we got a big dent right here where i think my knee or something went into it while i was trying to lift and uh the mud flaps damaged right now i'm still shaking from the adrenaline rush the good news is i can i've got full 
mobility of my fingers and everything, so I don't think I did any tendon damage or anything. Like I said, it, you know, if you could, this red mark right here, it doesn't look like much, but, and this mark right here is, my hand was in there, squeezed right like that. I took some ibuprofen. And I'm left-handed too, to boot. Well, no wonder why she couldn't get this jack lowered. It's all bent to hell. The rod's bent here and bent here. This whole thing bent like this. That's junk. This jack is junk. There's, that's why you couldn't get this to go down. 